Hello and welcome to today's Partner Infopedia web conference. This is the U.S. Office 365 Partner Community Call for February of 2015. Kicking us off today is Michael Panceroli, who is a Partner Technology Strategist for Office 365 at Microsoft. Michael, you now have the floor. Hi, thank you, uh, Deb. And uh, I'm Michael Panceroli, and on behalf of the National Partner Technology Strategist team, uh, welcome to our February call. And uh, if you've been joining our calls, you know that um, we have some monthly themes. And this month's theme uh, focuses around OneDrive for Business. And I'll be presenting an update for OneDrive for Business, and I'm going to give you a quick demo of some new experiences that uh, we've released recently and then also give you an update because a lot has been uh, happening and I'll also have some opportunities where uh, partners can uh, extend and build experiences on top of OneDrive for Business. And we have Jen, uh, Jenny Woodbury here with us. Uh, she's a product marketing manager for the USMOD and she's going to provide an overview of the Skype or business customer pitch and, and walk us through some training resources available to partners. Uh, there should be some time left for, for Q&A. At the end of the presentation, we have our Q&A window, and uh, we'll try to get to answer all those uh, in, that, in that window. Uh, here are some ways uh, to be able to uh, get in touch with our community. That's focused on Office 365. You're going to find information uh, on building your Office 365 cloud practices and other useful information on the service, training, and other resources. You can sign up for the newsletter, which comes out usually around the middle of the month, and uh, join the Yammer group, and specifically the Office 365 Partner Group on the U.S. Partner Community uh, Yammer Network. And you can also sign up for the monthly calls uh, if you haven't done so already. And then uh, on the Partner Blog, you can find uh, the first uh, post on OneDrive for Business, and you can find some other articles on Office 365 and Azure. Okay, so as we um, start things out, here are some of the supporting marketing trends and statistics. And as we use this slide to kind of tee up the file sync and share space. So basically with the bring your own device movement, uh, workers are using their personal devices to work. Uh, they bring those to work and, and they're looking to have their work documents there on those personal devices as well. And in that Forrester survey, uh, that 53% number you see there, of uh, users bringing their own technology includes those services that are unsupported by their IT department. And while many customers are allowing it, not all companies feel secure using it. And so in that same survey, there was a question, do you feel secure sharing or collaborating corporate content between the cloud and your mobile devices? And only 38% of those responded yes. So what's lacking in, in many of these solutions uh, is that it really falls into that space of organizational control. So the, the corporate data is now housed in an external system. Uh, they, IT's lost control of it. If an employee leaves the organization, <clears throat> there's corporate data still living out there. Uh, data loss, uh, data theft, and compliance and regulatory issues where IT can't meet the compliance mandates of their organization or maybe uh, difficulty in, in need discovery. So that sort of tees things up from space where we really still believe that this is a wide open space with a lot of uh, opportunity and we really believe that we're very well positioned. So this is our solution, of course, it's one drive for business and uh, this is an overarching value statement for one drive for business. Anytime, uh, anywhere access, so across the web, across mobile devices, across the desktop, they're all synced. Uh, we have real-time collaboration, and this is a massive area of investment that really represents the integration with Office 365 collaboration tools and the rich experiences which we continue to build out. So we do very well, and it's very important in terms of differentiation uh, of our competitors. This is where we win. So when a customer wants you know, the real-time co-authoring, the great experience in terms of Outlook, Word, and Office, you're going to need Office 365 to make that happen. And then enterprise grade. So this is a strong area for Microsoft and one where some of our competitors are still struggling to overcome that they're perceived as a consumer service, uh, particularly Dropbox, even after they release their Dropbox for, for business offering. So the one terabyte 
represents uh, this year effectively unlimited storage for the majority of users, and we're moving to unlimited. And now all major platforms are supported. So the Mac Sync client is now available in public preview, and you can work with these files offline where possible. And where we don't have it on the mobile experiences, those experiences are, are coming. So real-time collaboration, so simple sharing. Uh, we have a number of improvements, uh, some of which you'll see a little bit later in the demo. Uh, but admittedly, this is a bit subjective, right? Based on perception, one could argue one way or the other, in the user, you know, in the user experience, how that compares with our competitors. Uh, but certainly the native office experience, uh, this is a great experience here. It's going to get even better, not only with the online versions, but also in the desktop. Co-authoring and version management, we're really now second to none when you take a look at the experiences as compared to our competitors in this, in this space. And I just had the opportunity to see that firsthand at an internal conference, particularly since we added the real-time co-authoring. And then social conversations. Uh, this is an in-context document conversations from within OneDrive for Business documents where your, customer, where your customers have made that Yammer investment. They can have everything in context, whether they're in Yammer or participating in uh, right from OneDrive for Business. And then search and discovery, uh, both from in uh, OneDrive Smart Search, which I'll show you in a minute, and also uh, they can experience that through the Delve uh, search and discovery. And, and these are the areas where uh, we really win uh, outside of price. So enterprise grade, again, a very strong story. Uh, best-in-class built-in security, so we have uh, physical and data security with access control, encryption, and strong authentication. Uh, security best practices like penetration testing, defense in depth, uh, approach to protect against these threats. And we have a huge investment we continue to make in compliance, uh, all the ISO standards, the EU model clauses, HIPAA, FISMA. And you can check out the Trust Center for Office 365, which is a great resource, and you can see all those in detail. Uh, privacy is also a massive pillar of Microsoft Cloud strategy. Uh, privacy by design usually means that we're not going to hand over your files to the U.S. government, um, and we're also not going to mine your data for advertising. We also have great controls, uh, DLP, uh, soon policies to manage those with, as well within uh, SharePoint and OneDrive. Uh, we have legal hold, e-discovery, and uh, rights management. And then the SLA, we actually pay customers back uh, if we don't do our job. And we have flexible hybrid options as well. So if your customers have SharePoint 2013 Service Pack 1, it's really easy to configure all or part of an organization to use OneDrive for business in the cloud. It's amazing uh, how many of uh, my customers and partners don't realize that uh, they can do that with their existing uh, SharePoint customers. It's pretty flexible, and if you're looking for more information on that, you can go back and check out the SharePoint conference uh, keynote where Bill Baer did a, a great overview putting that together and expect to see a lot more of the hybrid scenarios in the uh, coming up uh, in the Ignite conference. All right, so we're going to do some quick demo. I'm going to make an assumption that a lot of people understand OneDrive for Business and how it works, so I just wanted to focus on a couple of uh, new experiences that we have. And let me go ahead and switch over to my desktop. And the first thing we'll take a look at is uh, the modern attachments. And I'll give you a minute. Hopefully you're seeing my desktop coming through. And so, you know, millions of people use their Outlook every day. And we really want to make the experience great. And we also don't want the email hell. Well, everybody is uh, sending out documents and which is the right current version. Uh, and so it would be great if we could just maybe share that uh, through OneDrive. So in this modern attachment uh, experience, I can go up and attach files. And up here on the uh, insert, you see I can attach from OneDrive uh, files or OneDrive files. So what comes up 
is all of my files from within OneDrive. So I'm operating within my demo environment. And this demo environment is available to, to everybody. It's right, it's just, this is just a standard MOD demo. So if you want to be able to demo this uh, for your customers, you can go do that. If you're not sure how to get that, uh, I recently did a, a blog post uh, that was a screencast that I built off that demo so you can see where those things live and how to do that. Uh, but right, and you find that on the US Partner blog. But here, I got to admit, first I thought this was actually OneDrive consumer. But if you look carefully, this is actually OneDrive for business. So in the experience, it makes sense. We're in Office 365, and I'm getting my OneDrive for, for business files. And that's going to be kind of the theme today, where you're going to see that OneDrive is really kind of converging to a single unified brand, if you will, and then having those two experiences available inside of that, that one brand. So as you can imagine, if I pick uh, one of these, it makes sense. It's already in, uh, in OneDrive, and it'll say, hey, share with OneDrive. Recipients can see the latest changes. Uh, but if I go to my computer uh, and my local drive here, and I pick a file from uh, my hard drive, it'll say upload and share with OneDrive. So what that will do is that'll take that from my local hard drive and automatically share it through OneDrive. And anybody on the two line automatically has uh, sharing uh, or edit capabilities. If you don't like that experience, you can always drop down and manage the permissions, but uh, that's just kind of the default way it works. So that's one experience I wanted to show. And then on the receiving side, so here's uh, Molly Dempsey. She sent me an attachment. She shared that from her, uh, her OneDrive. And I get this nice inline experience. And so Right from here within the context of the email, I can hit uh, reply and have a conversation around here uh, all while I'm actually scrolling through uh, the document. So I wanted to show you that experience as well. And the next thing I wanted to show was Smart Search. So this should be available, you know, and so just like a quick word, just kind of getting back to kind of recap those two things. You know, it's, it's an example of a great experience that um, our competitors really aren't going to be able to, to match, and the utility is great, uh, but it's how we fit things in, you know, to our whole experience that the people do every day. So again, this should be available in your tenants right now. Again, this is my, there's nothing special here. I have the first release uh, on, and this is just my MOD tenant that I created a while back. And I can just go ahead and start typing. I'm in my OneDrive for business, and so let's say I start typing marketing. You see immediately uh, I get all of my files that have to do with marketing come up. And you'll also notice that right in context, I have the share button right here. So without even having to go and click on that file and do the share, I can just go ahead and click on that share button right here and get back and invite me to people, get a link and share it with, depending on how you have things set up in your tenant as far as kind of the governance you set up and, and, and what's allowed. Uh, also, I wanted to show Delve. So again, a lot of you have been asking about Delve, and Delve is available uh, now within the MOD demos. There's even a, uh, a script that goes with that, and so you can go ahead and play with this if you haven't done so already. So I'm seeing uh, all of uh, the documents that are, are trending around me. Uh, I can see my own work, and I can see everything that is shared with me. And if you've played around with the concept of, uh, of boards, you can see I've made a board with a couple of the marketing documents. And then I can also uh, click on certain people and uh, see their work as well. So you might be wondering at this point, okay, well, what does this really have to do with, with OneDrive? Well, it has a lot to do because it's actually uh, – OneDrive is a first – class experience within the Office Graph. And so the, uh, the OneDrive is sending signals to the Office Graph uh, and picking up on those and creating this experience. And also what's very uh, interesting that I just noticed uh, the other day is that if you go to your OneDrive now and you go to, um, let me see, if I'm back on my OneDrive, and then you go to the recent files, uh, you notice that what they did with the recent files, they made this hard experience. And so they're starting to kind of move toward this uh, idea of kind of, of that same kind of experience. And so I thought that was interesting. And I think just from a direction standpoint, uh, it's kind of the way uh, that we're heading. And Delve, again, is another experience that we're not going to be able to, to get with our competitors. Let me just show you a conversation view. If you haven't 
uh, seen that. It's not behaving on my client today, so I had a nice fully threaded uh, conversation, but that's not uh, doesn't seem to be working. So I'm here on my uh, my Microsoft tenant, and if I click into uh, any document on my OneDrive, you'll see I have a little Yammer uh, conversation window. If you look carefully up over in the uh, upper right, you'll see my little Yammer, and I can uh, have a Yammer conversation and uh, easily share out this document uh, to Yammer from my OneDrive. It's default to all company, but maybe I want to uh, go share this uh, with the CIE group, I could add individuals in here if I want, uh, and then send that out and have an in-context conversation. That will put that in Yammer, and so I can have that conversation. If I'm a Yammer user, I can go ahead and collaborate on that document. Or if I'm working within uh, the Office 365 experience, I'll have that uh, same exact thread right uh, within uh, my conversation window. And one, one thing that... Uh, I forgot to point out, and this is going to be coming, and you probably won't see this in your tenant just yet, but if you're looking carefully on my OneDrive, you'll see that I don't have the ribbon. So for, for all of you SharePoint fans out there, uh, don't worry, it's, it's not gone. You can get it back, it's in the settings, and you can just say uh, show ribbon, and that will bring back the ribbon for those of you who, uh, who would like that experience back. So that was just one of the, the, the tweaks that were made. Uh, as you know, if you're a SharePoint person, uh, you're a site collection administrator. So maybe some things were uh, set up in the tenant with regards to versioning or rights management uh, in the uh, site collection template. And you know we don't want people to go in there and uh, override that. It also starts to bring together that experience between OneDrive personal and OneDrive for business, just kind of another move and kind of making those things look um, look a little bit more uh, seamless kind of going going back back and forth. And so in terms of, um, okay, well, that's all I'll say right now. I'm going to move on. I wanted to show you uh, just the mobile app. So I'm just going to switch over to, uh, to my phone. Now, I'm on a, a Windows phone here, but this is actually, this demo, uh, what you're going to see in this experience is extremely similar to what we just released on the iOS and the Android devices. So what we did, the Android device, the experience was already there. You can uh, download that in the store. Uh, in the iOS update, we now also have this unified uh, experience where you can bring together your personal documents and your work documents, and those experiences look um, pretty much the same as what you're seeing here today on my Windows phone. You notice I launched Lawn Drive, and up in the left-hand corner where you see uh, personal, these are my personal OneDrive files. So I'm getting all my personal documents. And then if I uh, swipe over to photos, uh, as this refreshes on your screen, you'll get to see uh, my incredibly exciting weekend. Uh, there's my dog, Hazel, who's really depressed because the Seahawks lost. Uh, but then up in the left-hand corner, you see I have my little menu. If I click on that, you see I have my personal account, and then I have my work OneDrive for Business as well. If you didn't attach this, there'll be a little message there. It'll say, uh, add your work account. And you can go in and add your OneDrive for Business and get your work documents on there. And if you see that I also added two accounts, right? So if you want to add more, you just go into the settings, and then uh, you add your work account. So here's my Contoso, and you see I have the same uh, experience with my works. Uh, here's my files. Here's the recent ones, and then uh, I also have the uh, the shared with me. So anything that uh, I've shared out or anyone uh, has shared with me, I'll be able to see uh, those files as well. Okay, let me switch back to our content. And now I wanted to give you some uh, some updates because there's really been a lot happening. And I'm a little uh, disappointed because today was actually supposed to be the day that we uh, made those recent announcements, but it was actually made just a couple of days ago. So uh, as I just talked about, the iOS Unified apps uh, for personal and business is now available on the Apple Store. And uh, also big news is the uh, Mac OS Sync client is now in preview. And you can get that in the Microsoft Download Center. 
And if you're uh, just finding this out for the first time or you want to learn more, uh, that blog article right there, I would really encourage you, everybody, to check it out. So I didn't show you a demo of the Mac Sync client or the uh, iOS app, but if you'd like to see those demos, you can just go to that blog article right there, and you can see uh, the um, uh, Ruben actually giving a, a demo of those experiences, so you can check that out there. So in development and the... Uh, Next couple of months, uh, we're going to have the Compliance Center that's been uh, in development for uh, a while, and that's going to bring a lot of these experiences together to manage compliance all under one umbrella, and OneDrive is going to be uh, a part of that with some additional features added for uh, you know, being able to, to, to manage your Office 365 deployment. Auditing and user, user reporting. So there is some reporting now there, but uh, we actually have uh, a lot more that's coming. So we have reporting of user activity where I'll be able to pick a user or file and filter by a date range and see a list of uh, all the actions in that period. So including, uh, you know, viewed and shared and create and upload and delete and other act, uh, actions as well in, in OneDrive for business. And so, you know, a little bit later, we'll also be uh, releasing APIs to make you can build some experiences on, uh, on top of that. So uh, we're looking forward to that. So mobile device management uh, is, is coming soon. And also uh, sync support for rights management. So you can do rights management in OneDrive for Business, but uh, we're going to be able to sync the RMS-protected libraries. And as always, uh, if you're not familiar with this resource, you want to uh, keep that handy, and that's the Office 365 roadmap. Uh, in the future, and this is, I think, where things get really interesting, um, where we're really converging to a single sync engine for personal and for, for business. And so there's a, uh, a OneDrive article in the, on the OneDrive blog. So that's separate from the, the Office blog, and that's your source for everything OneDrive. So uh, again, that's another instance where I really wasn't paying much attention to that because I thought it was OneDrive personal, but it really is all things OneDrive are in that blog, and you can uh, read that very revealing article about the future. And if you've checked out the Ignite sec uh, sessions, you've seen that uh, there's also going to be a lot of content uh, around this in a, a specific uh, session because Microsoft is absolutely committed to OneDrive and getting everything right between the experience and the syncing across all those devices. Um, and so be confident that uh, we are making that investment. So I've got one more uh, slide just to talk about some opportunities for partners and how you can uh, extend on OneDrive for business. And here are just some examples. Uh, of the value-added services that you can include in your projects or maybe packaging these up uh, as a managed service offering around OneDrive for Business as you look across kind of the life cycle of an Office 365 engagement. So there are onboarding opportunities. Uh, data migrations is, is by far the largest. Uh, complete content migrations from existing internal systems or <clears throat> maybe competitor solutions, but there are also other opportunities. Uh, in many cases, and I find this all the time, um, customers need data consulting around the complexities of the content repositories uh, to bring some intelligence uh, and consulting around the data. You know, what is OneDrive? What do I do with these old systems? How do I manage that? So how to structure it? What to do with existing content from line of business systems, uh, existing SharePoint sites, competitor solutions, <coughs> um, Migration projects you know, include uh, activities like triaging the existing content and then uh, remediation. Well, what do we do with this outdated content? Is this a lift and shift, or does this need to be reorganized? And then uh, planning help with things like tool selection, uh, communication, and, and, uh, and rollout planning. We have some uh, other activities for ongoing support and management. Uh, and finally, uh, partners can offer enhancements such as uh, apps for SharePoint with uh, OneDrive integration or build custom actions for documents. They want to do something special. When I click on that little uh, ellipses for certain types of documents, uh, you can build OneDrive device apps. And for your larger customers, um, you might want to add some custom OneDrive provisioning or bulk site creation. And we have uh, 
API support to, to handle some of those uh, scenarios. All right, well, I'm at the bottom of the, uh, the half hour, and what I'm going to do is uh, I, I bet there's a bunch of questions uh, going up in the Q&A window, and what I'll do is I'll uh, transition this over to, uh, to Jenny, and I'll let her take over as presenter, and I'll uh, try to knock down some of those uh, Q&A. And then if uh, there's something that I don't get to and you need a real question answered, of course, there's always the, uh, the Office 365 Yammer group, or feel free, I get a list of all these questions. If you include your, uh, your email address in there, uh, I can run these down if I don't know the answer to something and, and get an answer for you. Uh, some of you can speak them out. Um, that's all right. I'm just concerned about time. I'm going to transition to Jenny, and I'll try to knock them down, because everybody should be able to see it in the window. All right, Jenny? Great. Thank you, Michael. So, hi, everyone. My name is Jenny Woodbury, and I do um, link partner marketing for the U.S. And today, joining us at the top of the half hour, we'll have Roy King, and he does global link partner marketing um, and also works closely um, with the engineering group. And so for our agenda today, um, we're going to do roughly about 20 minutes of presentation. We'll see if I can keep it to that. And then leave a little bit of time for Q&A at the end. The goal for today is to give you an abridged overview of the Skype for Business Roadmap and show you a little bit about some of the key customer benefits that are coming in uh, the first half of 2015. Next, we're going to talk about partner resources, both for marketing and technical training. And then finally, we're going to do a, we're going to talk over the Office 365 adoption offer update um, that that recently came out um, that has to do with Link. So in November um, on November 11th in 2014, we introduced Skype for Business, and it's going to be available in the first half of this year. And in all simplicity, it's the next version of Link, and it brings together this familiar experience that we have with Skype with the enterprise security compliance and control of Link. And Skype for Business is the new client experience, it's the new server release, and it's a new update for the Office 365 service. It's all of those things combined. Um, and this next version is just, once again, it's the next version of Link, and we'll have server updates and online updates. And with the best of Link and the best of Skype, we believe that Skype for Business is going to again transform the way that people communicate by giving organizations the reach of hundreds of millions of Skype users outside the walls of their business. Now, I just want to stop on this point for a second because I think this slide is really important. And if you're going to deliver one slide to your customers, this is, this is a great one. Over 300 million people use Skype for messaging and audio each month. And that's 35% of the world's long distance traffic. That's significant. So if you think about it, Skype for Business and Skype, it's no longer something that you have to explain to your customers. If you say Skype, they know what to expect. And, and this is what we want. Skype for Business really brings together that best of consumer and also the best of the enterprise. And with this, one of the things that you want to emphasize is that customers don't lose functionality. They gain functionality um, with Skype for Business Server. And so this is the time to take advantage of the momentum of the launch. We're going to have a lot of great activity this spring to promote the new release. Um, and go back to your customers and talk about it. And so next I'm going to talk about a few updates to the Skype for Business client. So these are updates that are coming in 2015, the first half. So first I want to talk about the Skype look and feel. For example, as you can see in these screenshots, we are, I, we are um, adopting the familiar Skype icons for calling, adding video, and ending a call. Um, also, call monitor. This is a new feature that we're adding that was a, um, was a best practice from the, um, from, the Skype, from the Skype consumer product. Um, call monitor is a little box in Skype that stays with you as you toggle in between applications. So just another way to ease the usability for our customers. In addition to making the UI updates, we're doing this cross-platform. We're refreshing the apps for other platforms um, so that we have a consistent experience across. In addition, we're making an update to conversation history. So it will now track your conversations across your devices. 
So what this means is if you're having a link IM conversation on your phone, it'll follow you to your PC. And finally, connectivity to Skype user network. We're making it easier for people to connect everywhere, and Link already offers instant messaging and audio calling with Skype users. What we're adding now in the first half of 2015 is Skype for Business will add video calling and access to the Skype user directory, making it possible to call any Skype user on any device. And so this is a great value proposition for your customers. If you think about any customer that works in the services industry um, where, or you know, even healthcare, where they're needing to interact with their clients a lot, being able to tell this story of how you can connect um, is, a really, is a really great thing to highlight. And so next we're going to go into some of the um, online and server updates that are happening for Skype for Business. So first, um, the next version of Link is going to become Skype for Business Server um, and Skype for Business Online. And because communications is mission critical, this is a new release, and it's going to meet a new bar of reliability and performance. And we have made significant availability and manageability and functional and enhancements over Link 2013. And so first I want to cover two features to link servers significant for um, sales scenarios on your side um, that we think your customers will like. So the first one is call via work. Um, it, so if you're familiar with remote call control, call via work is, is, um, is an update that we're making. Um, and this is, this is great for those of you who have, um, for those of you who have a voice practice. Um, in your in your in your business. So with Call Via Work, how it works is an end user makes a call, and then Call Via Work will repoint that audio endpoint to the customer's or the user's PBX phone. That user's phone rings, and then pick it up, and the and it automatically dials out to the public switch telephone network. And this can work with any um, this can work with any public switch telephone network's phone. And this is a huge play for end user adoption. Um, when you think about it, those, those users that are hooked, for, hooked to their desk phones and they don't want anything else, this is a good way to ease them into the link platform. Um, in addition, it's great to sell into accounts if they have an existing, existing, um, if they have an existing PBX system that they're using and they're not done sweating that asset. That's also a great entry point for customers who want to start exploring enterprise voice but aren't quite ready yet to do the full rip and replace. And the next feature I want to cover is the um, native video interoperability um, with video teleconferencing um, systems. So now what we're building into the Skype for Business server is, um, is inter interoperability with Tanberg and other room systems. And so this is native interoperability, and it what it does is it takes away some of those roadblocks for customers that are choosing Skype for business um, by eliminating that need for customers to deploy additional third-party gateways or third-party services to connect. And so current link server customers will be able to take advantage of the capability simply by updating their link server to the new Skype for business um, with SA benefits. And no new hardware is required for that. And then for Office 365 customers, it's even simpler because we'll do the required updates. And so next I want to talk just a little bit about the Skype for Business online updates. So we have announced in past conferences that, um, um, that we are adding um, PSTN um, connectivity um, to Skype for Business online. And we haven't announced a specific date yet. Um, but we expect this to begin trials in the, in the U.S. in the second half and of 2015. And so this is our first step towards a full communication stack on Office 365. And in addition, we'll also be working with partners to give dedicated network connectivity. Um, in, addition, in, a, in addition to Voice in the Cloud, we'll also have a PSTN conferencing um, conferencing service as well. So a lot of really great and exciting things to look forward to, um, look forward to this year with Skype for Business. And so that concludes our, our, our pitch um, for Skype for Business. And next I want to go over just a few 
um, calls to action for you um, of what you can do to get your customers ready. Our goal in the U.S. is to reach 100% of our customers with the Skype for Business message and let them know that this is coming. And so our ask of you is go do those one-on-one -on -one briefings with your customers, and we'll give, we have the resources for you to go do those. In addition, um, the, the business group and engineering are putting together just a ton of great technical training opportunities. Um, in um, tandem with this launch. And so we'll, we'll share with you those resources as well. And then finally, we encourage you to join the Link Partner Connect newsletter for the latest updates. So I'm going to walk through each of these in a little bit more detail now. So first, marketing resources. We have a partner toolkit um, on the Partner Marketing Center of um, MPN that has an email template, the full pitch deck, not just what I shared here, and also partner FAQ, um, and finally a perfect pitch video that goes through that full pitch and gives you best practice of how to present, so I encourage you to watch that as well. Next, um, we encourage you to check out um, this blog post just as an introduction. It um, introduces Skype for Business if you haven't checked it out already. And then finally, when you're in conversations with your customers, we have a great video available on YouTube, great teaser video that talks about, um, really marries the story between Skype and its value to consumers, and then Skype for Business and how we're bringing those two together. So I encourage you to watch that and share it. Next, technical training opportunities. So we have two, sets, two main sets of technical training opportunities. The first one on the left is Skype for Business Readiness webcasts. Those webcasts, 15 webcasts, first one starts February 23rd, and they're, they're very detailed um, webcasts that go through a lot of different topics. If you have, um, for someone in your practice that is um, perhaps newer and looking to onboard, this is a really great option for them because it's very in-depth and goes through everything. Um, next, we have the Office 365 Summit webcast. So this is the old um, Office 365 Ignite series that's been rebranded this, this year to the Summit webcast, to the Summit. And they will be posting late February-ish um, five, um, five different opportunities um, to learn a little bit more. Um, and these are, these are not just videos of the Office 365 Summits, they're, they're full um, produced in a studio webcast of all of these five topics. If you already have prior knowledge about Link, these are great ones just to get the really, really um, need to know technical details. So next, um, we encourage you to join, um, once again, the Link Partner Connect newsletter. This will have all the information you need. Also, for technical, upda for technical updates and announcement, also in addition, we ask you to join one more network, the Office 365 Partner Network. This is where you'll see um, engineering, the business group answering questions and also pushing through updates. And so we encourage you to check out that Yammer group, as well, that Yammer network as well as another resource on top of the U.S. Partner Network. Um, any specific requests I would say, though, if you have, you know, for instance, if you need extra marketing resources or you need um, extra marketing resources or a customer concern, um, feel free to at mention me on the U.S. Partner Network, um, and I'm, we're happy to um, entertain those requests. Um, and, and that way we can also assess the need for the group if you have a need for more marketing materials or what have you. Um, and so... Moving on, we have one other opportunity for technical training coming up for in-person technical training. And so Microsoft Partner Services um, is a service as part of um, MPN that gives partners um, technical training and resources. And so this spring they'll be hosting Skype for Business Partner Integration Days. And they did one of these in the one of these, these in the fall. It was very successful, great reviews, and so they're looking to expand these. And so here's just kind of a a rough idea of what what some of the topics will cover. And real quickly, I want to go to a poll and just give.
get everyone's input because right now that team is looking to see where they're where they're going to plan these events, and we want to do them in the locations that are most um, most beneficial to you all. So if you're interested in attending, let me know um, if you would, wouldn't mind just voting um, with these voting buttons on where would be the best locations. Great, thank you. This is great data, I really appreciate it. Um, so now just going to switch back to the presentation real quick. So one other service I want to make you aware of is um, through Microsoft Partner Services is um, some of the technical assistance that they provide. So on the left-hand side, the one I want to highlight is technical pre-sales assistance. And what this is, is it's if you're doing a proof of concept for a customer or you have a question on um, an RFP or you know technical licensing recommendations, um, if you're a silver or gold member, it's free for deals over $3,000. And so as you start to step into these conversations about talking to your customers about, you know, what's the right environment um, for them to migrate from Skype for Business, what makes sense for them, and if you want a little bit more support on your end, that support is there for you. Um, and here we have a link at the bottom of the screen that walks you through um, how, to, how to contact them for support. And so next, I'm going to transition real quickly over to um, the Office 365 adoption offer. So last week, we announced that um, the E4 SKU, so the SKU that um, allows you to have Link Enterprise Voice on premise, is now included as part of the Office 365 adoption offer. Um, and so with this, what this means is that if you, for a net new customer that bought Office 365 between September 1st and March 31st, um, after that date, um, the customer can request and earn funds either to um, migrate their email um, with Microsoft, or they can choose up to they can choose um, to get funds with you, the partner, um, to fund part of their deployment and adoption activities, and up to $60,000 limit per customer, um, $15 per seat for 150, it's a minimum of 150 seats to 1,000 seats, and then $5 per seat above that. And the reason I mention this is because if, if for those of you on the line that just have a voice practice, or you know you're looking for you're looking for a reason, this is just another thing that you can talk to your customer about. Um, when you're having those conversations about future services, just to say that there's a little extra money and you can apply it to this as well. Um, and so for this, the way that they'll verify the um, on-premise deployment is they'll, you need 15% active usage and they'll use a PowerShell to verify that you're in your customer's environment to verify that you've reached that point. Um, you, have 12 months to you have 12 months to provide those services afterwards. Um, one key point I want to just highlight is that in order to qualify for the funding, it's all cloud productivity competency partners or cloud deployment partners by exception or communications competency gold partners for eligible E4 SKUs. So that is one main thing. You have to be a gold, part, gold communications partner to qualify for this. And so with that said, um, we are going to open it up for Q&A. Um, any additional, any questions, and feel free if you want to type them in the <coughs> chat window or else, um, or else, you know, feel free, um, we, can, um, we can answer those as well. And Roy, if you have anything else that you want to add, um, feel free to hop on and, you know, share anything as well. Do you want me to share with you what the yeah, questions are? that would be great, okay. yeah. So Jenny, there's a question um, that says, the Skype for Business Readiness link to registration isn't working. Can you share the URL, please? You might just want to yeah, check absolutely. that on the deck. Okay. Um, another one says the Partner Toolkit for link doesn't seem to work. Can you repost it here? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'll work on my, um, my 
check my links next time before I do a presentation. Thank okay, you. so we'll check those links. Um, another one says, will Skype for Business online only have a PBX or voicemail story? I think we're talking about like the telephony integration piece where you were saying, you know, that that's coming second half of this calendar year. Yeah, so um, so the Skype for Business online only. So so just to clarify, um, in, in the second half of 2015, once again, we'll be um, announcing enterprise um, enterprise voice in the cloud. Um, and so what that will be is um, connection to the public switch telephone network with a with an additional service. Okay. And so hopefully that satisfies that question. Okay. Um, and it looks like Roy is also typing a response okay, in there too. Um, let's see if there's anything oh, else for link. Well, yeah. I think the rest of the stuff I'm seeing in here is OneDrive. Um, somebody says, what about VoIP? Unless you kind of have a response for that, Erin, maybe you could clarify yeah. what do you mean? Uh, like what specifically are you looking for for VoIP? Is, are you asking for maybe a little bit more insight on um, the announcements that we have coming the second half of this calendar year for PSTN access inside the link, which will be Skype for Business Online? Um, yeah, maybe if you can clarify a little bit more. So he says, Skype for Business Online and VoIP capabilities. Looking for a little bit more information there. Hi there, this is Roy. Can you? Can yep, we you can hear you. Thanks, Roy. Okay, great. Um, well, let's see, I'm not, uh, to understand, so uh, Skype for Business Online offers peer-to-peer uh, -peer VoIP uh, today. Um, and that includes uh, peers across uh, federated uh, domains. Uh, and as well as the Skype public uh, network. Uh, so uh, the voice uh, or VoIP to a PSTN, uh, you know, a cell phone or landline number is what we will be introducing in the U.S. Uh, later this year. That's it for the questions in the queue on Link and Skype for Business. If there's anything else, um, feel free to type them in the window. Perfect. Excellent. So it looks like uh, while we're waiting for those questions to come in, if you guys would check out the, um, the questions and answers pane here, you'll see that I posted a link to a short survey. I'm also going to put that into the conversation window right now. Uh, and then again, we appreciate your patience and uh, taking a moment to fill that out prior to logging out. When you're in there, our, our voting scale is on a scale of one to five, with five being the best. So if you got some great information from our presenters today, or if you have some recommendations for future events, we'd love to hear from you. And then be sure to click on the submit button at the bottom to ensure that your feedback has been received. And with that, I will um, I will send it back to to our presenter team, um, Jenny, Michael, Roy. Do, do you guys have any other any other questions? Or if we don't have any questions, do you guys have any final words before we wrap up here? Um, yeah, once again, I'd encourage you, um, get out and start talking to your customers about Skype for Business. Um, and if you, if you need anything or you have questions and concerns, feel free to add, mention me on the U.S. Partner Network group. Awesome. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, Roy, Michael? No, thank you. No, thanks for joining today. All right, guys. Uh, so that does conclude today's Partner InfoPD Web Conference. Again, partners, you're going to be able to get to the replay on worldwide events in 24 hours. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenter team and thank you, audience, for logging in and joining us today.